Oh, VIP. More like VIP you. I am a fan. So <laughs> you will not besmirch the glory that is. Welcome VIP. to Bottle Episodes. <laughs> okay, hello. The beautiful and lethal Valerie Irons. Plucked from obscurity to head an elite Los Angeles bodyguard agency. They know how to get things done. Eventually. I'm David Piccolomini. We have a guest. Hey, I'm the guest. I'm Erica Wusu. Noted VIP fan. Yeah. Okay, guys. Welcome to Bottle Episodes, the show where we watch bad television shows and we uh, or poorly rated shows. You, yes, I appreciate that. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll look. I'll acquiesce to the guest. Uh, but uh, so we take poorly rated shows and we watch the pilot episode and the top rated episode on IMDb to see if they got any better. Uh, and this week we're doing VIP. Yeah, we are. Now, Eric, uh, I've actually, I did watch this show as a child because as I was neglected on Saturday mornings also. Uh, kindred spirit. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> we yeah, was yeah, both yeah, in the yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you not have access to the food network? Like I didn't have. So... I didn't have access to cable. So yeah. I watched everything as indication. Channel nine, baby. <laughs> yes. Okay. UPN bought this show mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. Yes. Uh, okay. It's WB in, in my neck of the woods. There was well, something you were that's explaining. The same network that's the s- oh well so, no before they were different oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. It, wb feel- and upn were different and then, and then, then they, they merged CW. to cw yeah yeah in like 05 06 all right i'm glad we've we've all the history has been preserved Hell so yeah. there was something that you told me earlier today which i think attributes your love of vip mm. which Other is than that the you were yeah well you were <laughs> your parents sent you to live in ghana for a year and a half yeah and then you came back and you saw vip hell and yeah you're like i love this i was like yo i'm back baby <laughs> and i'm reminded of how john john mccain was this a, is america <laughs> john mccain was a prisoner of war for years mm-hmm. and then when he came back the first uh culture he encountered was abba and then he was a lifelong abba fan uh-huh. to the point that he interrupted his presidential campaign in 08 several times to go see mama mia in theaters. <laughs> and i feel like that's you with vip yes i was a uh, arguably a prisoner of war and i came back and had a similar experience to presidential hopeful john mccain <laughs> god rest his poor Wait, soul hold on he interrupted his political yeah, his campaign like three four times he was like yeah, i'm not doing anything today we're watching mama mia he loved to have <laughs> I love that fun fact. What yeah. a dancing queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Eric, if you want to, do you want to explain VIP for the listener? Yes. Uh, also, as a I, fan? I, I, just to piggyback off of what the what a dancing queen, uh, this is late, but uh, he couldn't raise the roof, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll edit it in post. No, keep it, keep it where it is. <laughs> so, VIP was a wonderful show that hit syndicate. It was made for syndication. Uh, it started in 1998. And it was starring Pamela Anderson of Baywatch fame and nothing else fame. Home and, Improvement. <laughs> yes, Home Improvement. Barbed and Wire. Uh, barbed Wire. Uh, strip, stacked. Stripper Well? No. No, Stacked wasn't at this time. Yeah, but I'm saying other things that viewers uh, might know yes. are from now. Borat. Uh, also. Borat, yeah. Yes. Playboy. Playboy. Playboy Bunny. Yeah. Pam Anderson. And absolutely Fucking a nothing drummer. else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Regrettably. So uh so in the show do i do a synopsis yeah or? yeah okay. if you'd like to i yeah. can do one too i just you know i'd I say you. just do the ge- generally what the show is about we then we do each episode yeah, yeah. all right bet so it's, it's an hour-long semi-procedural <laughs> dramedy <laughs> where she she is 
a the head of a bodyguard company. Uh, these other bodyguards got done dirty by everyone's favorite meth dealer, and then she steps in to be the leader of this and the face of this uh, bodyguard company called VIP Valerie Irons Protection. She her name in the show is Valerie Irons, and she's silly and and scared and and is in oh in over her head, and it's great. In in my head, she's Jeremy Irons' sister. <laughs> <laughs> Within the logic of noted the show. thespian yeah. Jeremy Irons, <laughs> Valerie, you must be prepared. <laughs> you must play the part. Don't let the part play you. <laughs> <laughs> now you alluded to it in your description, but I think we need to say in the pilot episode. Yes, Brian Cranston is in it. Ooh, as... pilot for anyone who doesn't know at this point, the pilot is the first episode of the show. Yeah. Yeah, we we hope they're at that level of television knowledge that, you know, look, you you are right. And listen, that's why we have less people listeners. listen to 38 episodes and be like, what's up? <laughs> if, only, blue plane? <laughs> if only there was a computer way to find out. <laughs> but not only is Brian Cranston in this, Dean Norris is in the first episode as well. Yep. Yeah. Two principals from Breaking Bad. Yeah. That would come a, 10 years after this pilot. Yeah. 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 And I'm willing to bet. Uh, Aaron Paul watched this so. <laughs> as a young child. Yeah. Aaron Paul also jerked off to this episode. Probably. Yeah. I feel like that it, it is a weird show because it was on at like 2 p.m. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And so like, who is that for? Well, I guess horny, lonely Us. people. <laughs> well, children, but like, like something for dads to watch while they're watching their kids. E- yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, for I don't know. Like we watched it, but like were we the intended audience? I guess eyeballs. I mean, it was all about Nielsen ratings, baby. So whoever tuned in, whatever time, that's who it was for. <laughs> you know, listen. I like that Zen approach to the ratings. <laughs> Do you know who created this, by the way? A JF something. Yeah, JF Law. He, he wrote Lawson? Pretty Woman. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. Uh, Under Siege, <laughs> Siege. <laughs> which is two weird things to have written. Hey, you got to do what you got to do in Hollywood to survive. <laughs> but also, if you combine those two movies, that's They're pretty that's much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. He was like, this will be the best of both worlds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the show starts off with, Pam- it's uh, yeah, it's just Brian Cranston fucking this wo- like trying to a yacht. Yeah. seducing a model on a boat while these three hitmen are wandering around so you want to you want to do it dan go for it go okay for it. so brian cranston is supposed to be a celebrity bodyguard and yeah. he's guarding diamonds that models on a boat are modeling with yes but he fucks off and tries to seduce one of the models below which, deck which is what he does that's his mo he's he's a scumbag yeah. But a lovable scumbag. Cause the 15 minutes he's on screen, the show shines. <laughs> That's Dan's favorite he's part. He's great. No, he, I, we were watching it. And I was like, it was like he was playing a live action Simpsons character. Yeah, he was very exaggerated. He was doing yeah. his best Troy McClure. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was in the middle of doing Malcolm in the Middle. No, no, no it had been started like yet. just before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This was 98. Malcolm in the Middle wouldn't happen until like oh, 2000, I think. Okay, Not so this is just any job in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so he he's supposed to be guarding these diamonds. He's trying to get his dick wet. Uh, pirates <laughs> board the boat. <laughs> yeah, you know how you know those L.A. pirates. <laughs> those L.A. pirates <laughs> coming straight from Catalina. <laughs> Johnny Depp get... boards the boat <laughs> <laughs> and says, "I'm the captain now." And and yeah, they 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 try to rob them. And so one of the models isn't actually a model. She's one of the uh, security guards. Yeah, keeping keeping things together while she knew brian cranston was gonna be fucking off somewhere yeah, yeah that's the whole it seems like their whole thing was he was just the face of the operation because people would trust his tv security job yes. yeah he was he is a famous actor from a show very much like vip within the universe <laughs> yeah it's like it's like a beretta wow what a reference <laughs> i think more people know what pilots are than what beretta is <laughs> <laughs> we are niche content yep. <laughs> Let us shine as such. Next, we're gonna Beretta is is a is a show about a cop whose partner is a bird. Everybody, <laughs> just to let is that you know, what yeah, that's what Beretta is. is. Oh my god, they just put Not anything on TV back in the day with Bird Retta, which mm. is it was a bird cop whose partner is a human <laughs> named Retta, the yeah. star yeah. of uh, Good Tro- uh, Good Girls, uh, yeah, and yeah, Parks yeah. and Rec. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's a she's a bird cop's partner. <laughs> yes. <this show. laughs> 
love to see her work. She's great. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, I, I would was, watch that as an animated series. Yeah, and Beretta, he it was pl- that actor that uh killed someone, right? Oh fuck, it was. Yeah, it's Robert Blake. It's Robert Blake. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Now it's all clicking. There's the Chappelle joke. Beretta did that shit. Yeah. Now it's all coming together. I think we should note right now <laughs> that everyone here. It's not 85 years old. <laughs> it's put together. Put together, or yeah. Or about 90. Yeah, but we still know what Beretta is, and I want to apologize. <laughs> okay, it would be like hiring uh, Bruce Campbell from Burn Notice, because you saw him in Burn Notice. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, if he was the lead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the lead of Burn Notice's Jeffrey name. Jeffrey Donovan. Okay. <laughs> what else has he done? Uh, he's in a season of Fargo. This is great. This is like, you don't need IMDb. You we just, got Dan Crow. Yeah. <laughs> Human he's Google. He's just in a lot of stuff. Okay. Also, that might be the name of his character in Burn Notice. <laughs> if <I'm being> honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Love it. I don't need to know. Honestly. Okay. So, uh, VIP. Yes. So, the boat thing happens. A boat gets blown up. <laughs> hey. And then it was like a different camera angle. Where before the boat blew up, we were watching like something's gonna blow up in that shot. Oh yeah, it was too wide a shot <laughs> yeah. of the boat. It was an establishing boat blowing up shot. Yeah. It's uh it's it's the when you hear the music where it's like bop bop, and you're like, oh, but okay. The, the main boat doesn't blow up. A smaller side boat blows up. The, the pirate boat. The blows pirate up. boat yeah. blows yeah. up. But then when they we throw cut, a grenade in it. When we yep. cut back to that shot, it, it's not like sinking. It's just gone. There's no fire. There's, there's no, no fire. Debris. There's no smoke. It blew up, immediately sunk to the bottom, <laughs> took everything with it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> 98 was a wild time. Also, yeah. That was a f- wild fight in general for like 90s television. I was like, this, they're oh, they going got chore- for it. choreography. Oh, yeah. I mean, the one woman had, uh, I don't, what was her name? They all. The one that. The short haired one? Short hair. Mm-hmm. Nikki oh. Franco. Mm-hmm. She had like a fully like automatic weapon yeah it wasn't even like a semi-automatic i think there was a stand to it yeah it was a full rifle yeah, <laughs> yeah she had a full automatic like uh, like ma- machine gun that she was just using on this boat yeah in close contact with like mo- unarmed models and the photographer <laughs> yeah. with ricochet mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and he's not killing enough people for having no. that strong of a weapon people get shot and do not lose any blood in this show <laughs> <laughs> they just, get they just blood, fall <laughs> bloodlessly shot mm-hmm. yeah this is 100 percent they're like we can show this on television at 2 p.m mm-hmm. despite be active okay. it being an active war zone yeah. <laughs> uh so then uh i don't they uh tasha and quick williams yep yep love quick uh of uh, uh sean baker of living single fame boy when the credit said sean baker i had so much hope <laughs> you thought it was an nfl player i thought it was the uh, auteur filmmaker of oh. films such as tangerine and the florida project <laughs> <laughs> i thought he was gonna be in this it might be the sa- and it's not the same guy not the same not guy the- adding yeah. some real gravitas <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and we all gotta start somewhere guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> to be fair he takes people who have not done much and turns them into really talented actors. Yeah. It gives them a shot. So yeah, if yeah. he had just been an actor on this, he probably would have had a, a lot of good advice for people. That's true. That's true. I think that would have been... I now want to see that version of VIP. You want to see Sean Baker's version of VIP? <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot of uh, Valerie Irons coming to terms with the idea of her violent future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, pr- and present. And being surprisingly okay with becoming the head of a bodyguard company where all her bodyguards actively shoot bad guys they don't guard people with their they don't no. jump in front of bullets no they are killing they are people. shooting people la is so dangerous in this <laughs> world <laughs> it's more dangerous than robocops detroit yeah <laughs> and then they get paid and brian cranston takes all the credit and they're pissed yeah yep yep because yep. uh, like all bodyguards they really want the fame <laughs> right they don't want to be incognito <laughs> All bodyguards, they want to be publicly known who they are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, easy targets. Yeah. Yep. Uh, But then it cuts to a scene of Pam Anderson and her friend working at uh, a hot dog stand. uh, 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 You forgot the misdirect. 
So it's it cuts to oh, Pam yeah, Anderson you're right. Jesus writhing Christ. in a giant luxurious bed in almost the full silk negligee for like five minutes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And then oh, she's yeah. got butler. She's got a sexy French maid. I said, what kind of soft core porn is this going to launch into? And then the butler wakes her up in the dream. Uh, what does he say over and over at her? Uh, give me, you want a hot dog? All you <laughs> eat is hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He lifts. What? What's the? What's the thing called? The the fancy yeah. uh, dinner, I, half I half silver. It, I know what you're talking oh, about. oh, like a ramic, not a ramic no. but like a platter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lifts a it silver in. platter. Yeah, it's literally. Yeah, he, he lifts the half silver dome thing off the silver platter. The fancy thing that rich people eat out of, and there's a hot dog in it. And then that wakes her up to her hot dog job. She works at a hot dog stand with her bestie, who never gets in named. Full makeup. They are full, yeah. wearing so much makeup. Hottest to work at a hot, hot dog, dog vendors in all of West Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Maxine De La Cruz. That was go- the character's name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm love not that kidding. For love that for Oh yeah, you got the IMDb up. I love that. Maxine De La Cruz. I can almost guarantee you Pam Anderson never says the name Maxine out loud in the pilot. No, no, no way. No, she's just like, Bestie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick of working at this hot dog stand. And then a uh, a fucking Brad Pitt level celebrity. L- L- his name is like Brad. Hall or something. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very close to Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pud. Yeah. Which I would love if that's uh so yeah, he is he's try it's like nineties Brad Pitt. That's what they're mm-hmm, doing. Mm-hmm. Where he's just like an M- but also they don't really understand what makes Brad Pitt interesting or good. Right, because Brad Pitt's actually a great actor. He's yeah he's not just a hot dude. He's really interesting. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And they're just like this guy's hot coated yeah brad hot guy Mm -hmm. so he comes up he's like yo can i get a hot dog and they freak out and fangirl over him and then he takes the hot dog he leaves by the way Mm -hmm. anyone that famous wouldn't get their own hot dog absolutely not they got assistants they got fucking drivers unless he heard hey there's two very hot women working at a hot dog stand then in that case the line would be longer yeah yeah That's the that's the problem if they was publicly that, known. That's the logical fallacy I have with this scene is that the line should be longer. Yeah, if if someone that looked like Pam Anderson worked at a hot dog stand in LA nowadays, they'd go viral their first day working Immediately, there. Immediately, yeah. I mean, that is kind of I mean, well she gets the moment cameras are on yeah. her, she goes viral. Yeah. That she just she has to do a thing first though. Yeah. Cuz there true. were already cameras taking pictures. Yeah, her life in this is very much like remember that guy got arrested and people like that's the hottest mugshot of all time (laughs) and then he got a modeling contract and all of that Mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. very similar by the way his name is brad cliff (laughs) in the show yeah okay wonderful yeah i didn't even remember that that is the opposite of a pit by the way a cliff (laughs) actually that's really good that's a really good writing Uh, all right i'm back on board give him props (laughs) it has good job jf (laughs) it has assonance too so it still sounds like oh my god hey man this guy didn't write pretty woman in under siege for nothing (laughs) cinematic masterpiece okay i do want to call it out they do uh she says that's the plot of Under Siege. In the second episode. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, in the highest rated episode. Yeah. yeah. And oh, it's yeah, so yeah, yeah. He, he just, I was like, oh, really? Way oh. to pat himself on the back. <laughs> I wonder if he does that in other. Every that's episode the plot is, of Pretty Woman. Every episode is either Pretty Woman or Under Siege. <laughs> <laughs> this one is also on a boat at the beginning. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, it's all coming together. Yeah, yeah. It's all this, coming together. Guys, is this secretly the most genius TV show ever written? <laughs> we get it. You're a fan. <laughs> I didn't hate it. It's very silly. Oh, I loved it. It, it gets very boring as soon as Brian Cranston leaves. To you. <laughs> no. To you, Brian Cranston is the draw. He's got the he gets why this is funny. Yeah. But everyone also, else is taking it deadly serious. But also that's what made me enjoy the Dean Norris part so much, too. Dean Norris takes us very seriously. <laughs> it's like very uh, it's so funny. Uh, oh, man. Dean Norris takes everything so seriously, which is his greatest strength and weakness. And also, did he have a weird accent in the in the Oh, pilot? yeah. Okay, oh, I, so, wasn't, I wasn't mishearing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, and then um, they go on a shopping trip. Yes. So, Pam Anderson. So, Valerie Iron. Sorry, I'm going to call well, her Well, no, Val. we skipped because... Brad Cliff is like, hey, you want to accompany me to a movie premiere? Yes. Oh, yeah. Tonight. You're but so hot. Before she goes on the shopping trip, we cut back to Brian Cranston, and he's like, he finds out that he owes a lot of money for taxes. So he goes, he takes all of his money out of the 
uh, the bodyguard business, mm-hmm. and he goes to the Cayman Islands and with he, his with his trick walls like a Nickelodeon yeah. game show. <laughs> oh, that building looks like a, the Nickelodeon studio. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's a very Memphis group style they have there. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot to hide in that bodyguard. I, I know we've already referenced Beretta. You'll have to forgive me as I reference the Memphis group. <laughs> <laughs> I got that reference. Thank you. Yeah, Glad, you got Glad one of us did. <laughs> I, I used to date a woman who had a chair tattooed on her butt. Uh-huh. They were designed so she could always sit on her favorite chair. That the aesthetic of Nickelodeon and other things from the 90s was very influenced by. I see. They're not from Memphis. They're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> they're just called the Memphis Group. I love that for them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> they also have a bird partner. <laughs> at trick walls named beretta yes yeah. yes yes full circle <laughs> but no so then brian cranston finds out he has a lot of taxes he takes all the money he can out of the business mm. sells the business to the bodyguards and he's like i'm out bye oh With he, a tricks the, he tricks yeah. them uh he goes uh they're like we want our five grand you owe us a piece and he's like great here you go or you could buy this business for just I don't know, five grand a piece. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a it's the monorail. It's like, woo, that just happens to be my exact price. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a coincidence. Just Love the it. most early nineties hoodlum schemes. Mm-hmm. Hoodwinked, bamboozled. Yeah, literal he literally bamboozled them. Yeah. So then they find out once they have the business that it's very in debt and they are not gonna be able to run it unless they have Someone famous that's going to bring in the clients. Okay, yeah. wait, but yeah, you got to go back. You now, because yeah, yeah. that's ahead. Super conveniently, the secretary who comes in to tell them that the business is in the red wasn't in the room when he hoodwinked them and gave yeah. them the blank contract for them to buy his business from him. So then as soon as he leaves, like two trains in the night, yeah. she comes in and is like, hey guys, here's some information that would have been helpful 30 seconds ago. But I'm still a good guy, right? Right, yeah. right. Even though she knew he was running away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she knew his every Or move. she was not suspicious by the mention of Cayman Islands <laughs> at <Yeah>. all. <laughs> she knows how to hack into government mainframes, yeah. but she didn't put two and two together that he was running out on the bills. <laughs> Cayman Islands, that's just if we're va- we vacation, right? <laughs> she gets him a fucking town car to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so... Uh, then we cut back to movie premiere, uh, or the fashion show. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Yeah, so now, so now Valerie Irons and what's her name? Uh, Dela Cruz. Maxine De La Maxine Cruz. Maxine De La Cruz uh, are in some boutique store trying to get Valerie Irons the perfect red carpet dress, and it's a whole montage and it's very silly, uh, very nineties. Also, this it's hitting all the nineties tropes. But also, like fully, just it's like they go to like a sex shop. <laughs> it's actually not but yeah no but like that's it's not a sex it's shop but vibes. it's it's like lingerie mm-hmm. it's like called like pleasure or something yeah do you remember what it was called i don't remember I what it's called but it was something like that it's called vip <laughs> it's a huge coincidence <laughs> very intense pleasure that's what this yeah. just stands for so uh there is a place in west hollywood called the pleasure chest that has like lingerie and toys and leather everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it doesn't have dresses it's not a boutique no so. that's the thing is that it's it's but it's framed as like we're gonna go to the hottest place right where pamela anderson is going to undress and redress over and over Several for times. all of we're, us wearing all types of sexy stuff also a nod to pretty woman because she's in there not knowing how to dress for a thing yeah. And the friend, and uh, there's a person who looks at her is like, mm? like just uh, gives her a look. So yeah, another nod to another JF original. He has one scene that he knows how to write. <laughs> and everything else is a variation on it. He knows boats it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm getting dressed. Uh, yeah. So then they go- she goes on the uh, movie date. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he's talking, he's a, just a huge scumbag. He's like, Brian Cliff, yep. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta keep fucking a new woman every night. He yes, never he dates the that. same woman twice. Yeah. yeah, didn't she say the same thing after he said that? And then he got grossed out. Right, double standards. Yeah. Wow, this, this show is a feminist show <laughs> is. Yeah. Actually, we should have tested to see if it passes the Bechtel test. I don't know if it does. Um, maybe there's a lot of women working at the. No, but the Bechtel test is. I know they have to talk about something that's not a man. Well, yes. yeah, but I'm ass- well. I'm assuming they're talking about like the case. Actually, no, it does, because the, uh, 
Well, they talk about how much De- they love the house at one point. Yeah, so Dela Cruz and, and Valerie Irons talk about the dress yeah. in the store. And there don't, you go. Don't necessarily mention a man. Okay, cool. It's passing the Bechdel test. So yes, right. feminist, iconic show, VIP. Take that, run, Lola, run. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they go to, uh, she goes to the premiere. Oh, she was given a bag that was full of like change. Yeah, like a when coin did that purse. I missed how she got that. Someone gave it to her at the shop, but I'm also not clear why. It's It was just an accessory for it. And uh, Maxine de la Cruz was like, listen, if a man gets too handsy, swing you can this just at him. <laughs> hit him with the bag. Uh. And so that's why she had it. And so that is the poorest thing you could ever take to a Hollywood premiere with you. Yeah. Imagine Some someone knocks you over and your bag full of change <laughs> spills out. It and did spill out. No one commented. Yeah, well, yeah, because you hit because there was an obvious it worked. Yeah. She's it's like the a, one circumstance where it worked. She's like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> she <gets laughs> stuff, just coins them. flying. Technically, everywhere. she's Dr. Robotnik. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. The robber was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, it worked. But yeah, could you imagine if it's just like, what happens if we get attacked at this movie premiere? Okay, crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Also, a big Hollywood premiere like that would have security. <laughs> That'd be yeah. so, I, so I live in L.A. For the, for the listeners. I'm a TV writer and a comedian. Anytime the Oscars happens at basically the mall in Hollywood, you and I have been to the Center, Dave and Buster's above where the Oscars there, happen. right. There's a Dave and Buster's right next door to the Dolby Theater where the Oscars happens. <laughs> Every time that happens, they shut everything down. There's so much security. There's Jersey walls erected and fucking uh, barricades. So this would not happen in in the world in LA. No, there's no way you get to the actual red carpet at all. You have to uh, tr- try so hard. <laughs> and he walks very slowly with a gun. <laughs> right, with a hat on. Yeah. To get so close to this guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't a sniper. It was a dude with a handgun that just yeah. walked up. Also, you know when you're about to shoot someone and you go, hey, <laughs> look over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. You need their full. You need to make eye contact with your victim before you kill them. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, Brad Cliff hides behind Valerie Irons. Yes. And he does some great acting in this scene. Can I just <laughs> say Oscar the, ex- the, the expressions he's making? <laughs> I, I can describe. It's like he ate a warhead. <laughs> That's what he looks like the whole time. That is spot on. Yeah. And then uh, she saves the day by using her coin purse to hit a gun out of his hand and then hit him in the head with it. Yeah. She hits him a couple times and then security shows up and restrains him after the gun has been knocked from his hands. Yeah. yeah. We don't want security to get injured. <laughs> no, that's only you, the job. No, they have to murder him in cold blood. <laughs> no, that's the police. That's what. No, that's what good security does. I've yeah. seen VIP. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're alluding to. Yeah. Uh, and so then he goes in and gets interviewed and people are like, why did you hide behind this poor woman? And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, she's not my date. She's security. Mm-hmm. She's it, a big, famous bodyguard. Yep. Big. Yep. In every sense of the word. All yep. five, two of her is yep. very big. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, yeah. When he has to hide behind her in that scene, he has to squat down so far. Yeah, he's scrubbing the ground. He's practically ass. laying down <laughs> to hide behind her. Uh, <laughs> That's very true. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So then, and then she she she's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm his bodyguard. And then the local news is like, there you have it, folks. The most popular bodyguard <laughs> in all of L.A. is Valerie Irons. And yeah, they just all yeah they all pretend to know her, and they're like, mm-hmm. you know how Hollywood is. Yep, yep. Once they hear about something, it's a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You'll be first first there to be like, I knew about her way back when. Yeah. And so that's when uh, the the rest of the group finds out that they're broke. Yes, the 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 Brian Cranston led security agency. Not anymore. He's gone. He's yeah. gone. Yeah. V- Brian Cranston fled security agency. There you go. Wow. Look, that's where you see the TV right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quick on my feet. <laughs> but then, so then there's a weird bit of meta commentary. I think. Oh, because they go on where they're like. Oh, man, this business is never going to work unless we get a recognizable face to lead it. As they walk up to the hot dog stand yeah. <laughs> that Valerie Irons I, I also wondered if it was commentary because Brian Cranston's character feels so fleshed out mm. that I wondered if when they originally wrote it, it was intended for that. 
And then the executives were like, what if this was a Pam Anderson led show? <laughs> oh, interesting. Because the commentary is very heavy handed. Like, it just won't work with one of us. Mm. No one knows who we are. That's why we need to get someone everybody knows. She's also. It very... doesn't even matter if she doesn't know how to do the job. Uh, oh, oh, my God. The only reason it worked when Brian Cranston was there is because he was a formerly yes. famous person. Within the universe of the show. Yeah. Cold the universe, Arrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was his name in the show. Yeah. Oh, my God. What name? That's honestly, I yeah, because the show around a fame, a fake famous guy, where the security agency is like working. Mm. That's a funny idea for a show. Yeah, yeah, and it's it, less funny when Pam Anderson is trying to deliver jokes, <laughs> <laughs> and when like she's also trying to be the action star of yeah. it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, but I like that it doesn't force her to try to become an action star for real like she's scared she doesn't know what's going on she's in over her head which is very believable oh but by the second season she's full action star yeah yeah by the second season it's like what haven't i done (laughs) yeah she now she's fully barbarella on this yeah Uh uh-huh um so then uh she's like famous at this point for being a bodyguard she's on still working at the hot dog stand yeah because she's not a real because it's only been a day of fame yeah, but she's made it on like a bunch of magazine covers in a day. Yeah, she th- really? yeah, yeah, there was magazine covers of it. Oh, I think it's God. been a week. Okay, because they're also they're doing that thing where it's a shorthand, like where they're talking about her, but they never established that they ever found out about her. They literally go, "We need like a Valerie Irons." So it has been a little bit, which is also very true to LA because you can be on TV everywhere. And the checks have not come or will not come, and you're still working your day job at the hot dog stand. Yeah. It's very LA. Oh, man. This show, so LA. It's so perfect. <laughs> it's if they went to an In and Out, that would have been. Uh, they probably couldn't get the rights. Yeah. Also, In and Out, famously Christian. So they would not have, have gone some... for a killing or Pam Anderson's boobs. Christians love Pam Anderson. What are you talking about? Uh, prove me wrong. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> they love her in private. Right. Yes. Yes. Behind closed doors. Just like their prayers. So then, yeah, they go to visit her at the hot dog stand. They don't know she works there. They were just getting hot dogs. Which is also kind of fake for LA because those fit-ass, beautiful-ass bodyguard people are not eating hot dogs. They eat tender greens, sweet greens, (laughs) rabbit food, kibble bits. Yeah, this... There, nobody is eating those trash hot dogs yeah, in yeah. this beautiful people I don't town. know. I bet they were not bad hot dogs. Oh, they were probably great. They were in a hot dog-shaped building. Yes. Like, That's how you know they're good. <laughs> like carnies or yeah. pinks. Uh, so then they uh, they see her and they're like, Oh my That's God, it's it. you. <laughs> we got it. We got it. What are the chances? Yep, they proposition her right there. Not the first time Pam Anderson had been propositioned right there. If you're on the job, right? yeah. <laughs> literally in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. So, what better actress to get than Pam Anderson? Who has I could give in- you a list of a hundred <laughs> <laughs> that are competent. I actually, actors. no, you can. So, I won't test the, you. On the that. thing is, she seems like a nice enough person. Yeah, but she, come on, she's man. not an actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, she's an actress because they keep casting her in things. Yeah, or cats. yeah. They just uh, this show is basically it's like. Uh, this show walks so like Chuck could run. But he was actually no. an actor. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. But like, this is the same premise, except for they gave him superpower. They gave him like vague uh, superpowers. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about Chuck's or what's his name? Um, Shazam. Yeah, but we are talking. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, no, he's a good actor. Ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not shitting on him as an actor. Okay, I see. I see. I see. Just as a per. No. Uh, <laughs> But this this show actually like very similar premise to Chuck, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like one intersect my minus one intersect. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. But Thanks, um, so then the rest of the episode is them. They get hired to guard Brad Cliff as yes. their first client. Oh, because yeah, Brad Cliff is being uh, attacked by Nazis well, or white actually, supremacists. When yeah. they when they first hire her, they give her Brian Cranston's old like luxury apartment. Yeah. And then there's her and a friend moves in there. There's a weird dream sequence where they're by the pool and like someone's massaging Pam Anderson's butt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that's what the show is about. Or feet. I think it was her feet. It's a combination. Of- <laughs> it's a lot of leg. Every yeah. good massage, you got to get the glutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we all know this then they get hired 
to guard Brad Cliff. He's like, oh, you're a real bodyguard. What a coincidence. Yeah. But Brad Cliff told the police or the t- detective, whoever the fuck, uh, that he j- had just fired Pam Anderson. Yeah. Because he shows up to the police department without her. And the yeah. cop is like, where's your where's Valerie Irons? He's like, oh, I uh, had to let her go. <laughs> so uh, the, yeah. who then hires VIP? His manager. His manager. Because ah. they're like, you need a bodyguard right now. Mm-hmm. The white supremacists are after you. That's right. They're after him because he mentioned one of them by name in a movie. He mentioned their leader in a movie. As it's so honestly, I really did enjoy that part. That part made me laugh a lot. That's where really funny. he's just he's going. They were like, "Hey, the uh, Jackson Lazar and a bunch of white supremacists are after you." He's like, "Why are they after me?" He's like, "Because of this movie scene where he goes." Jackson Lazar, <laughs> you're a real piece of shit. You know that, right? So he was already beefing with this white supremacist group. No, he didn't even seem to have a problem with them. He's just like, I don't know. I thought it added authenticity. He heard the At name no on the news. At no point does he does he condemn their viewpoints. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's just he's like, yo, this is a hot name in the streets. <laughs> I will say, I don't know movies. the name of white supremacist gang leaders. <laughs> I think you have to be in that world to know them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Jackson Lazar, your time has come. <laughs> but then also, uh, Hank from Breaking Bad isn't mad at the director, the editors no. of the film, the no. studio. He's like, yo, that actor that improv my fucking gang name, <laughs> he's got to die. <laughs> <laughs> also, how long has this movie been out? Like, did it just come out? Is this a sneak peek? That- I think that was what they were going to the premiere of. And at some point. The white supremacists had seen an early cut. <laughs> I thought the actors who were in it went to the premiere to see it. Yeah, like the, one of their people's an you editor. Did, yeah, you didn't hear Skinhead Jim's an editor. <laughs> you gotta make it. And be kept it up. in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but didn't edit it out. <laughs> did they cut it out? It was like, yo, boss, my boss is over at MGM made me keep your name in this movie. Let's go kill the guy who said it. <laughs> white supremacist Bill was a grip on the film. He was powerless to stop it he cried while he was lighting it right. he's a perfect aryan specimen of an actor but he said our name so we gotta go shoot him up jackson lazar <laughs> it's such a petty reason to kill some I, is... I know the white supremacists are famously petty yeah, but yeah. i just but didn't this. this is step too far white i actually i've had a white supremacist be petty to me in uh, what oh, context <laughs> did you say his name in a movie say wait say their name on the podcast right now and right. see what happens <laughs> their name is jackson lazar <laughs> uh no there's a big okay so uh in like 2012 uh famous year for white supremacists oh yeah uh they yeah well they were going to i was living in philly and they were going to the leaf erickson statue to celebrate columbus day or leaf erickson day or something because they were like, he's the first white guy to discover America. Okay. So they were super pumped about that. Uh, this group that like the KKK clicked, kicked out. I forget what they're called. Uh, there's a picture of it on my Instagram. Uh, but uh, we, me and a couple of friends decided to go as a uh, give them a white women's welcome. Mm. And we all dressed in dresses. Okay. For the protest. Just to like, just fuck with them and be funny. You know, you know, they're white supremacists and not necessarily queer phobes. Yeah, we well you we played found right that out. into their hands. Yeah, they <laughs> loved us. No, uh, but they kept critiquing that we like we wore sneakers to the ah. Uh, <laughs> and they as were being, if women don't wear sneakers. <laughs> well, we were wearing sneakers and dresses, and they were just being real petty about it. And then those also, are clashing, <laughs> just like the poster for the Julie Roberts film Runaway Bride, which was not written by the creator of VIP. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> Uh, also, the woman critiquing me also was wearing like skull pajama pants, so I did not take them too. The classic uniform for white supremacist women everywhere. Okay, we got to get through this episode. Okay, sorry. Also, <laughs> real quick, the one of the, the the tall bodyguard in the uh, uh, VIP. I don't yeah. forget her name, but she is definitely Tasha. Tasha. We were definitely saying she's a cross between like Gina Davis and Julia Roberts. Yeah. Like that's just kind of her vibe. Yeah, I would I would say that. Oh yeah, we forgot about Brian Cranston expertly quickly giving everybody their uh backstories. Oh yeah, in, like oh, three geez. sentences. It was incredible. He was like, Tasha Dexter, you are Russian or you're not, or you are a spy, but the Cold War being over is bad for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nicky you know Franco. You your friends. Yeah, because he basically was like, where are you guys going to work? These are why you can't work anywhere but here. And then laid out their backstory. Yeah. Nikki Franco, you're a cop, but 
But also, you work. Your your uncle's a mobster. <laughs> Nobody will trust your last name, Franco, <laughs> which is actually just good advice. Long, Maybe it was long, signaling. Long term, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you and another Franco will ruin it for everyone. <laughs> quick, Williams. You're too quick. <laughs> You're just too quick. <laughs> I actually don't remember Quick Williams' backstory. Uh, yeah, his whole thing is his shape up was egregious, so that's why he has no other choices. <laughs> Quick Williams, you've only been able to do eighteen episodes of a semi misogynist character mm-hmm. on Living, Living Single. Single. Yeah, yeah, yep. That boy was working. No it. one will cool. work with you after this. <laughs> anyway, the rest of the episode is pretty much a pretty boring siege. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, the the white supremacists descend on Valerie Irons Protection Agency. Yes, because uh, uh, Brad Cliff has been absconded to uh, for there for protection. By the way, they immediately made over the detective agency. Now it's full of pictures of Valerie Irons on the wall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's been uh, famous for about a week and has had multiple photo shoots done. Yeah, professional photo shoots that Again, go on the this wall. This is very Hollywood for yeah. her to work at a hot dog stand, but also be an aspiring actress. Yeah. So there's this, probably headshots everywhere. Also. This is Pamela Anderson in the 90s. Like, people, like, I think they were just proving, like, everything was just like, because that was her experience. She got photographed once. And they were like, yeah, you're famous now. We, mm-hmm. we have to, everybody wants to, should see this. Yeah. And that's just what keeps happening in every one of her shows, too. Yep. And this is before deep fakes and AI recreation. So these are actually pictures of her. Yeah. All just over. Hot dog glamour shoots. That's what this should have been called. <laughs> hot dog glamour shoots yeah h g s tv h g s and then it's just a siege for like 20 minutes and then yeah, at the a end a bloodless siege yeah. with fully automatic rifles they get shot no blood they just fall <laughs> it's like the flag football version of an assassination <laughs> paintball rules guys yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then at the end dean norris is I don't even remember what happens. He just uh, he oh. grabs one of the short-haired uh, bodyguard and holds her hostage. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, he has a gun out on them, and then he takes the one hostage. Yes, and Valerie Irons comes and has a gun untrained on him. Oh, uh, Quick is like, hey, buddy, Valerie Irons is actually really a secret agent mm-hmm. bodyguard and person. And she can shoot a dime from 100 yards out. Oh, yeah, they do a callback, mm-hmm. dumb thing, and then he's like, yeah, I don't believe you. And that she's there with an assault weapon. That could take everyone out in that moment. Yeah, she should not be firing that. The, with the like the recoil alone is going to kill. Mm-hmm. Everyone. She had the safety on, though. Yeah, we yeah. will find out after they yeah. uh, take down uh, 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 Hank. Also, it was three versus one. He had a handgun. Those are supposed to be like three trained killers. Mm. They should have just been able to take him out. He was not that. He eventually did. Yeah. With, with some trickery in mind games. It took way too long, and he had a gun. On, it didn't seem like the situation got less dangerous mm. at the end. No. If anything, it, it, it uh, escalated very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. He had a gun straight on Tasha's face, and then somehow that's when they were able to disarm him. Mm. Anyway, uh, I think that's everything that happens. In the pilot, yeah. And she agrees, yeah. To, uh, Valerie Irons agrees to stay on and, and be the face of... Well, of Valerie course, the other Irons. option is work at a hot dog stand. Yeah, and life has gotten too rambunctious and high octane for her to go back. A joke they go to twice, by the way. Beats go into a hot dog stand. They go That's back the to name the, of the episode. They go, yes, it's the name <laughs> of the episode, and then they say it twice in the episode. I think it's the last line of the episode. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, poor people... Poor person that works at a hot dog stand and is watching this show. <laughs> it's like, fuck my life. The writers couldn't think of a worse job than <laughs> in working, LA. Than working in and a And there hot are dog stand. so many worse jobs yeah. in LA. <laughs> also, I mean, if you're working at a hot dog stand, you're probably not affording premium cable. So uh, this was the only show you could watch yeah. at certain times. Because it was a syndication. It was in a couple of different places and markets. It was this or public access. 100%. Uh, also, uh, at one point, she picks up her friend from the hot dog place, and, and like she's a like Corvette, yeah. And she's like, "I can't leave. I have to still work at the hot dog stand." It's like, "No, you don't anymore." Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is. You with me. We can leave our obviously creepy foreign boss that we have coded in here, who doesn't say anything. He just kind of gestures at them. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a side card. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so much money to get him SAG yeah. for the pilot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> they lied to him. They told him it was a success. They would just keep using him. Mm-hmm. Like, Hollywood. They were like, you know what happened with the coffee guy and friends? That could be you. Uh-huh. Soup Nazi. I love the idea that he was actually just, he owned that hot dog cart, and that's how they got to use it. They're oh, that's like, actually the owner? Yeah. Like, you could be on TV, but you can't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And then uh, let's do the bottle episode. Was Mal it a bottle goes episode? To the highest rate episode. Oh, highest rate. The name yeah. of the podcast is Bottle Episodes because. <laughs> Wait, where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> the idea is the shows are so bad they'll make you drink. Uh, That's the name Bottle Episodes, but it's also a tell. You, you, I don't need to explain to you the television term. Bottle. Yes, 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 yes. Look, okay. the show's dumb. <laughs> we having a good time. Yeah. Uh, I also I want to I want to. They have so many bad titles in this. Or great titles. Like, also, we were looking as at- a series, mm-hmm. it's like some of them, like New Valed Order. Yeah. New Val just, who this? That was it. <laughs> uh, 21 Val Street. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Return of the Owl. Right. <laughs> Valma and Louise. Lights, camera, Val. Stop or Val's mom will shoot. This is how Rick and Morty names episodes. Basically. So why can Rick and Morty do it and they're genius, but... Because Rick and Morty doesn't try to have these uh, intense moments that this does. <laughs> Rick okay. and Morty is happy to admit that it's a joke. This isn't. Mm. Yeah, they're well, doing a it dramedy. kind guess, of making yeah. fun of this. Yeah. Uh, or are they just doing it? It's always hard to tell. But the top rated episode with 26 votes is Val Goes to Town. Uh, Val's client is confused with David Duchovny, so they're both kidnapped by mistake, but easily freed. And let's talk about that. That that's the open, cold they, open. That cold open was they jumped right into it. Like yeah. they're already bound in the back of this truck. They're uh, given exposition like pros. I thought there was a glitch, and we had started in the middle of the yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, same. It did feel like that. <laughs> it <Yeah>. just started. <laughs> Could you imagine if you're just like watching TV at like 2 p.m. on a Saturday, like, and this is like, we're trapped in a van right now. <laughs> it's how every episode should start. Yeah, just cut, cut the chaff. Just get right to it. We're grabbing everybody by the dicks mm-hmm. and lead them right into a VIP episode. Yeah, with Dean Hagland. <laughs> Was that the long hair guy from X Files? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I've only ever seen the pilot. And random clips from X Files. I thought you were gonna say top rated episode. I was like, you suck, <laughs> man. I've done another podcast that's just like this one. Sorry, to, sorry to let you know, guys. They do good shows. They like the show. <laughs> that one's called Emmy winning episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Emmy with, episodes with Dean <laughs> Norris. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. Speaking of, this is an Emmy winning show. It is. We I looked that up. They won for. Single cam editing. Single cam editing, yes. And they were nominated for theme song. Yes. And, and so nominated in their first season for best theme song for the daytime Emmy. Let's not get Which it true. they will have heard at this point. Yes. Uh, yes so yes. good. And I sang it in the car on the drive from New York. Yeah. yeah I, I remember it, the tune. Yeah. It's great. Oh, love it. It's it's, it's music that only exists for theme songs. 100%. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're captured in the car. There's the joke is they got the other X Files guy, which no they didn't. They got the other 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 X Files guy <laughs> <laughs> several steps down. Mm-hmm. But also that is also the joke of the show is that's the X Files guy they could get, and the kidnappers yeah. that's who VIP could right. capture. This like, is a better scene if they just get a guy that looks vaguely like David Duke. Right, and that's which yeah. Halle is full of. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone who looks like David Duchovny in L.A false <laughs> I, uh, yeah i was being sarcastic oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um but yeah so they got the long-haired guy from actually from x files and and so this is this is a very met not meta but what's it called when someone plays who they actually are in a tv show yeah, that could be meta. meta okay yeah so yeah, it's, meta. Meta scene. it's incredibly meta yeah super meta um so also x files exists in this world yeah but does baywatch exist in this world I mean, I guess we'd have to watch the whole series. I think yeah. a lot of the same celebrities exist because looking through all the guest stars, there were a lot of famous people playing themselves throughout. Yeah, Paul McCartney's in an episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, Paul McCartney yeah. is in an episode of VIP. <laughs> but it's like... What? Arbor- it's, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. According, what? according to IMDb's cast list. But don't forget, we watched Dog with a Blog, and it said Barack Obama was in an episode. He was not. He was not in an episode. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> can just edit IMDb however they want. Okay, that's fair. I'm going to be in VIP. (laughs) (laughs) 
I just love Pamela Anderson's boobs. There it is. Famous, famous for being a boob guy. <laughs> oh, <Courtney. laughs> He's not a leg man. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, man, the references are getting too obscure. <laughs> Uh, okay. So yeah, so this is this high rated episode. <laughs> <laughs> so they get him out, but there are a lot of explosions. Uh, oh yeah. I give him credit. The camera angles were less obvious where the explosion was going to be in this one. Yes, they've learned. I will say the action in the show is not bad. Yeah. They flip a car in this cold open. <laughs> yeah. Everything happens in this cold open. I was like, because the pilots a lot of times, uh, the pilots for act or live action stuff are the opposite or for action stuff are usually like they throw so much money into mm. it to get the, like the big effects. Mm hmm. And this show just kept them going for what I guess they figured out how to work on whatever non-budget they had. Yep. They were like, these 88 episodes are going to be highfalutin, <laughs> big I, ass explosion episodes. I guess if you know you're making 88 episodes no matter what. Mm. The money is already budgeted. You just know how to budget your money a lot better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. They did it. Congratulations, guys. We're, we're still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Give them credit. Also, when y'all were coming up with lists uh, of shows for me to potentially do for this podcast, and then you said VIP, I said, I love VIP. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, I had a blast watching this. This was fun to watch. Yeah, it took me back. Uh, really took me back to 2001. <laughs> yeah, it's same, honestly. <laughs> and then the towers fell and it was never the same. <laughs> If only VIP had been there to stop that. Oh, they would have absolutely stopped us. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. The second oh, episode. Oh, man. Yeah. Just... Terrace, get down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would have done way more than Marky Mark would have done. <laughs> <laughs> Is Pam Anderson the woman version of Mark Wahlberg? Without the beating up of homeless people, sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I will say uh, VIP post. Oh, it went into 2002, so I wonder if they followed the trend and there was a lot more torture in the last season. Yeah. Mm. Probably. <laughs> well, it depends when they filmed. That's uh, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but so <laughs> they blow up a bunch of stuff and then the chief of police was like, you can't blow things up anymore. <laughs> no, he says, y'all have been blowing up too much shit lately. You've been making it hot for me. So I need you to chill for like a week. <laughs> While we recuperate. Yeah. yeah, there's politicians on my ass. <laughs> right. The mayor's on my ass. <laughs> the mayor's giving me shit. That's why it's called Val Goes to Town. Because he's like, you guys are going to have to uh, go in front of a council. Mm -hmm. In front of a hostile counselor. Fucking town hall. <laughs> Doris Blasker. <laughs> so then once, the, once they're not uh, using guns or bombs anymore, the president reaches out to them and is like, I need you to guard this nuclear weapon for us, and they're just like, "Sorry, it's this, no, it's no bombs week for us." Is it? It's not the. Pre it's like a it's, city council president. No, no, no. Like the president through the military reaches out to them. Like, oh we yeah, help you, us. Oh, you're right. Them. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. And they're like, sorry, it's the one week we can't. <laughs> right. Which making it reach out to the chief of police and be like, "Hey, we're doing this thing." The president asked. Right. Someone like, who has oh. higher rank than you <laughs> told yeah. us we need our guns this week. <laughs> uh, so as soon as they don't have guns anymore. Ice T playing the prophet, who who is a repeat uh, um, uh, he's a cast a, member. He's, he's been a, on the show before. Yeah. He's a repeat villain because yeah. you know he's a repeat villain because as soon as he shows up, one of the one of the bodyguard goes, "Oh come on, it's the prophet again!" <laughs> 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 what a Batman response to I a know, villain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Doris Blasker, who plays the uh, main, uh, she's one of the antagonists, the politician. Oh yeah, yeah. For the episode. Uh, that's uh, Lisa Lo Cicero, who is a major uh, soap opera star. Oh, from uh, I think it's Days of Our Lives. Oh, cool. She like she's one of those people who's been in like five hundred episodes or nine hundred and sixty two episodes of General Hospital. That's wild. That's who should be on the show. <laughs> yeah, like all soap stars. She's still on. Oh, yeah, she was still on. <laughs> Like to this day, yeah, love that. She's 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 that that woman's working. Yeah, <laughs> that is a working woman right there. You know who else is working? Ice T. He <laughs> sure it, is. Giving it his all in this, but I I don't. It's hard for me to take take Ice T's acting seriously ever. He loves either being a villain to the police or a police officer. Yeah, that's his whole. That I've never seen him in a role that's not those two things. Because he also played a villain to the police in New York Undercover. Another uh, basic TV broadcast show. <laughs> uh, 
So if he's not a villain terrorizing police, he is a police officer himself. Ice, Ice T plays both sides. Uh huh. He's got a distinct presence, but yes. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> also, very powerful genes. His daughter is a spitting image of him. If you've ever seen, oh pictures. god, no. Also, I, I Ice T thought... in Rick and Morty. Yeah, that's true. No, that's that's Dan Harmon way. doing Ice T. Ice T's a character. Dan Harmon does the voice. Oh, I see. Didn't no. I see his name appears in those credits. No, Ice T oh. started doing his own. Oh, I, yeah. It started off with Dan Harmon doing the voice then. Mm. Yeah, um, and now Ice T just joined. He pl- he plays a character that is the Ice. Okay. Like a tea of made of ice. By the way, I just want to note that when you said very powerful jeans, I was like, is Ice T wearing a notable pair of jeans? Is, it, <laughs> no. is he wearing Jenko G- or something? Genetics. <laughs> yeah. I could not stop looking. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Uh, Ice T plays Magma Q. Okay. This. Ah. So Dan Harmon plays Ice T, but Ice T is in Rick and Morty. <laughs> That's yes. fucking hilarious. Um, so <laughs> it's just deeper and deeper levels. <laughs> so Ice T is, I guess. His gang, their plan is to do something with whatever. They're trying to do terrorist shit. They're trying to get this bomb that has anthrax in it. And they at one point point out, it's like under siege. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't they say that line at or on route to the strip club? Yeah. Oh, God. There's a lot. There's extended stripping sequence. Oh, of course. Yeah. Where Pam Anderson and a short haired bodyguard go undercover as strippers and they do a probably three minute strip dance it goes on, on for stage. a while there is i i wonder if that's like the the show is one lewd scene Sing per per show like episode, uh because yeah. i remember very clear like a lot of laser dancing like in the show oh, like, like a like lot of like avoid yeah avoiding lasers and like a skin tight body suits like that's yep. a lot of like oh look i have to stretch like this <laughs> 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 But David the, just stretched in a stripper way and got his feet close to Dan's face, and Dan recoiled. Hated more. it actively. <laughs> but, hated uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> so they they go undercover at the strip club because Ice T is just a patron there. Yeah, yes. they gain no information from stripping. <laughs> and also, no, they got information from somebody about something. No, afterwards, unrelated to the stripping. Yeah, oh, they could have the right, right. just gone and asked them. <laughs> But then, so there's now this... you got to prove that you're not a cop. <laughs> right. Yeah, because strip clubs famously hate women just being in the yeah. strip club. Yeah. <laughs> you got to work to be in there. <laughs> so, but then they do this extended strip scene, mm-hmm. and it's it's pretty steamy. Glorious. But then <laughs> the next scene, someone says, "I'm gonna kick his butt." I'm like, "Why can you do the extended stripping scene, but only say butt?" <laughs> what are the morals? What are the advertisers saying yes and no to here? Look, uh, quality control and <laughs> the. Uh, What's what's the name? What's the name of the department? Standards and Standards practices. Of, yeah, S and P. Yeah, they they've got finicky rules and they change every season of television. I do love the idea of uh, someone trying to explain to the prophet why he gave all this information to Pam Anderson. And be like, look, boss, she's stripped. I thought she was clean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she had a different wig on. I didn't know that was her. She was a redhead. <laughs> then they use that information to go to Griffith Observatory, one of my favorite hiking spots. Yeah, where Ice T is. <laughs> He, the Got plane is as a, as a gun drive. <laughs> so they're they're handing in their guns to the police, and then Ice T, who the police know he is a domestic terrorist. By the way, <laughs> he's a known bad guy to the police, but they agree to work with him on this drive where people are handing in their guns and like, and you'll destroy them, right? Ice T goes, yeah, <laughs> and instead he just sets up a he sets up a tent behind them selling the guns, <laughs> <laughs> and then Pam Anderson shows up. He's like. Hey, he's selling the guns. He goes, no, I'm not. I'm destroying him. The cops go, damn it, Pam Anderson. <laughs> Let him destroy the guns. Well, because it's, 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 there's a fake out where they grab like five of the guns. Mm. And they're like, we know he's doing a bad thing with them. Mm. And they're like, well, why would he do a bad thing if he set up this gun drive? Right. And then it's like, reveal. gun. It's a gun drive. They're like, no, we've been trapped by Ice T again. The Who, prop- whoever wrote this episode is an alcoholic this, this is the this is how a drunk tries to explain things to you <laughs> how gun drives work yeah no <laughs> uh, you don't understand domestic criminals set up gun drives all the time with the police man yeah the police are in hey on they it. say keep your enemies close <laughs> <laughs> or closer that's why he's the prophet he's always two steps ahead hey, of him hey look at him go <laughs> it was unclear to me if you how they were spelling prophet p-h or f uh p-h okay 
Because he, he might just be like the money uh, guy. Yeah, the money guy. The yeah, that also worked. You're right. It's a double entendre. It'd be great if there was another villain that was also named the prof. He's like, Ice oh, it's, Cube. It's spelled differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ice Cube for an episode. <laughs> he's the prophet, but he's all about the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay. Uh, they go, what happened? What happens at the end? Then there's a bomb. And then there's a Ice-T piloting a helicopter. Well, no. First, Ice-T goes to the city council, but who's taking a sexy bath. Yeah, see, so he's in cahoots with the city council DA. He's like, you what, need... What is this woman's role city in the council. city council? Okay. Yeah. And then she's like, you need to vote to make VIP illegal. <laughs> That's going for, yeah, in front of the city council. Shut them down legally, right? Yeah. And she's like, what's in it for me? And he's like... The sexual relationship we've been having for the last two years, <laughs> and she was like, "Right, I forgot." <laughs> and then, and they, Come into this bubble bath. Yeah. I see. <laughs> then, I wish he had just full clothes. He basically did. He, did. Yeah. he did. he leaned into her, yeah. kissing her while she's in the tub. And then, so then <laughs> this is free cell phones. They don't. Oh uh, yeah. So oh, then, yeah, he couldn't. Yeah. The rest no, of there was cell phones. Yeah, you're right. There are still. So they kidnap the woman that is like Gina Davis. Make her pretend that yes. she's doing a crime. Oh, yeah. And they make her to walk with the fucking bomb <laughs> yeah. that was loose in the back of the truck. Yeah. With, she's holding it by hand yeah. like it's a goddamn vase. <laughs> yeah. I think it was, a, it was a combination bomb and anthrax dispenser. Yes. If I remember correctly. Yeah, that looked and, like a giant bullet. And it was just standing up in the back of this van. <laughs> this empty van. It could have fallen over so easily. <laughs> Strap it down. One sharp turn on La Siena Boulevard yeah. and the whole county gets nuked. <laughs> yeah. Nuked that was and a prophecy, and <laughs> the, which is excessive. <laughs> right, that's insult to injury. Could you imagine surviving all this cancer just to get anthrax? Oh my gosh, take me out! So then, interspersed with them getting that, stealing that bomb from the government, which why did the government have a nuclear anthrax bomb? What was their plan for it? They, they knew about that it. in case 9 11 happened. Oh, there you go. And around that time, like 2001, 2002, anthrax was the big scare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 99. Well, yeah. there was one bigger scare Y2K? 9 11. Oh, well, yeah. Um, we talked about 9 11 a lot this episode. I'm sorry. Everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's the era. This yeah. podcast is against 9 11 and Nazis. Hey, speak yeah. for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one are you okay with, 9 11 or Nazis? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right. He saw the side. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's like interspersed with them stealing the bomb and framing the Gina Davis woman and Four, then yes. going to city council and they're trying to vote them down. And Pam Anderson and, and a- Alex uh, De La Cruz. What's her name? Uh, oh, uh, Alex, uh, Maxine, Maxine De La Cruz. Yes. They have... Uh, they're weirdly dressed up. Yeah, the they're dressed like sexy librarians in a pornography yeah. film. It's well, because it's Val goes to town, so it's vaguely political. Yeah. So they're trying to answer questions, and they're just getting bullied. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Until Val speaks from the heart and lets the city council have it. She's like, sometimes you got to do bad things for the greater good. Like cops be killing people, and we're at war, <laughs> killing innocent villages, but it's for the greater good. Go America! And she yeah. gets a fucking round of applause. And then they're like, okay, VIP can exist. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were like, VIP can exist. That She was like, that wasn't a legal argument. And then <laughs> it, they expose and find out that she's... Oh yeah, they evil. expose the other the city council woman. No, they don't do that yet because they leave after well, the council. But that's what I'm saying is back. they get. I think VIP does get voted out because she's like that was a nice speech, but not really a good legal argument for why you should exist. Oh, uh, did I make that up? That no. sounds right. But like immediately afterwards, they find out that the video that they sent was actually from ice t Yeah, and like oh, we need you to stop. We need VIP Ice-T. now more than ever. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, by the way, the cop in that uh, Javier Grajeda uh, is from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Oh, my God. Look at that. You sure Vince Gillian wasn't a writer in this writer's room? He must have been watching it regularly. <laughs> I wonder, actually, if there were writers with overlap to uh, what's what's X-Files? that? X-Files. X-Files, because that would be... Vince Gillian the, was on X-Files. Yeah, well. Vince Gillian. Mm, yeah. Probably. It's possible they just were, like, filming in adjacent studios and became let's, friends. Let's see what the... is. It, Cast and crew, me, writers is probably on there. Yeah, yeah. He's probably now. We just have to know all the writers for the X Files. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, fine. so yeah, how do we? What was the? And then the end of that. Um, they end at a pool party. 
But I, how do we? Yeah, get I don't remember how they get there. <laughs> uh, they, oh, the they, helicopter! Oh, the helicopter! Thing. Yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, Pam Anderson knows how to fly a helicopter in this universe. I thought I see kidnapped her and made her get on. Oh the god, that's the worst. So they're up in the air, <laughs> and he thinks Dan he's has in, sat straight up for the sparks. <laughs> he's in the helicopter with the city councilwoman. Oh, because yes, because but it's Pam Anderson a wig. She just had his her back to him <laughs> the whole for enough time. time for them to get up in the helicopter and be They're over in the air, over the ocean. And Again, then she turns and goes, "Ha!" It's me. She had and, a red wig on this time, and he's barely surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, he says, "Hey, what the hell?" <laughs> yeah, it's not the amount of. He should be like, I can't believe I fell for this. This is this is Twice. embarrassing for me because he knows who she is. Yeah, but in the strip club, she, her fucking wig is yeah. disguised enough that he doesn't know Pam Anderson. Sorry, but then eyes. then she just kind of pushes him out of the helicopter. Right, the door was unlocked. It's pretty it's pretty easy to push Ice T out of a helicopter <laughs> when you're a five foot two woman. It's pretty easy to push that guy. And he out. falls to his death in the Pacific Ocean. And then she knows how to fly a helicopter. I guess so. Yeah, because she doesn't crash. Yeah, I guess she learned between season one and whatever season that was. I guess. And yeah. Then, by season two, she is just killing people. She is rampant. Very. <laughs> she yeah. is, Five foot two Rambo. <laughs> I will say, uh, I couldn't. I don't think anyone. Uh, there's X Files crossover, but uh, one writer did write on Nightman. Hey, yeah. Nightman. No, we already did Nightman. Oh. I'm sorry. Nightman part two. There were two seasons of that show. Yeah, but honestly, we could probably do a lot of his. Uh, this guy's <laughs> right, written by <laughs> another syndicated show. Oh yeah, we got other stuff to go uh, through. Anyway, these are <laughs> secret previews. If you've made it to the end of this episode, hey, of course they did. They love our and silky, velvety voices. So then, yeah, they're on the beach, or not? They're at a pool, and they're like, "Val, you should run for mayor." <laughs> Your like, speech was so good, so rousing, so riveting. And she's like, "Nah, fuck the government. <laughs> VIP till I die." And they're and like credits. <laughs> <laughs> they also were like, "We're gonna, ins- we'll be your secret shady business people as the mayor." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they were setting up a spinoff with the exact same cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with with a with a puppet mayor yeah. who's not actually a politician. Um. So I think I think the pilot is better than the highest rated episode. Because of Brian Cranston. Yeah, of course, because of <laughs> Brian Cranston. He breathes life into the show for 15 minutes. He was very good at being a cartoonishly scumbaggy person. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, Daniel, what would you change about the show? Brian Cranston should be the lead. <laughs> it's no question. Get that very good actor <laughs> to being every episode of your show. <laughs> Uh, and what what would you recommend a show that they do check out? If you want to watch a show about uh, idiots that are keeping the law, watch Police Squad. Oh yeah, yeah! Let's wow, yeah. deep cut. I like it. Just keeping this episode in the oldest tradition. <laughs> that I, we've, I like we are Police actually sixty year old. I'm re- <laughs> recommending Beretta for everybody to check out. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, no, Matlock ahead. is my recommendation yeah. if you love VIP. <laughs> Eric, what would you change? Uh, what, do you, what, what, what show would you More recommend? Pam Anderson. She should have been in the goddamn cold open. <laughs> she should have. Pam Anderson and Brian Cranston are never in the same scene. You're I, right. I realized. He might elevate her. That would have been amazing. Too buddy, steamy. And right, <laughs> Brian Cranston was too fucking hot <laughs> in a cold yeah. open with his shirt off. <laughs> He's the one who cocks. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That was his first shirt off probably on TV because then on Malcolm in the Middle, he was clothless and just tidy whitey for a lot yeah, of that Yeah, he was show. a lot of... He naked a lot on that yeah. show. And then opening scene, opening yeah, scene of Breaking Bad, he was in his tidy whities with his thighs out. The it's in his contract. Meat. He demands it. He got to have tidy whities Has to. Uh, yeah, so more Pam Anderson in the show. She's the lead. I know, but she wasn't in everything, so... <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and then what was the other question? Oh, uh, what? Uh, just uh, a show you think people should check out, like an actual good show. Matlock. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Another classic from my childhood. Really, you're a big Matlock guy. Loved Matlock right. growing wow. up. Wow. Oh, my God, yeah. It had the black dude from uh, Walker, I'm pretty sure. Walker, Texas Ranger, his partner. I, I believe sure you. That, that area of TV is pretty unknown to me. Oh, man. I loved Walker also. I told you I didn't have game. I watched <laughs> everything religiously. <laughs> Land of the Lost, Relic Hunter, another good bad show. Oh, with uh, and, and Tia never, Carrera yeah, from Wayne World. And you Wayne's never World. saw Beretta. I no, I watched Columbo reruns though. Okay, Beretta didn't come on. 
Well, then, yeah. when we have you back next time, you'll have to do Mrs. Columbo with us. All right, but oh, that was a real show. Yeah. With, or, uh, or any of the reboots of these old shows. Yeah. There are yeah, a lot yeah. of reboots of Did like. Did they reboot uh, Columbo? MacGyver. Uh, MacGyver, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, for me, I think uh, what would really improve the show more Dean Norris. Dean Norris was good. <laughs> <laughs> he was good. Just have Dean Norris actually take out pamela anderson to be like i'm actually the head of this crew yeah. you're part of my crew now yeah. more and bold then, white nazis <laughs> in this tv show yeah we're doing <laughs> it's sons of anarchy <laughs> with the cast of vip all over la the crossover we didn't know we needed <laughs> did it want did it need could it have too hot to handle ow <laughs> vip mm-hmm. You, these important people, they're white. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. And quick. Don't forget quick. <laughs> and quick. <laughs> uh, okay. And the show I want to recommend is uh, one that also references Beretta Party Down. Uh, okay. There's an extent- Beretta had such a legacy. <laughs> <laughs> people love him. Uh, Party Down is just a great show, though. You should just watch it. Third season came out and was also very good. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the most compelling reason to get stars that there's ever been or, you know, uh, just steal it. 